In this lecture by www.free-academy.com, we're going to be exploring inflection points, concavity, by using the second derivative test. This actually runs very similar to what we did in the last derivative, on uh, the last lecture with the first derivative test, only this time instead of taking one derivative and then setting it equal to zero, we're going to take two derivatives and then set it to equal to zero. And this is going to tell us about the concavity and the inflection points. Now when I say the concavity and inflection points, what does this mean? Inflection points is where you switch from concave up to concave down. Okay, so what's concave up and concave down? Concavity is your curvature of a function. Is your function curving up? Is it curving down? When a function is concave up, I'm going to grab a different color and just denote this C-U-P. Yeah, I just caught that. C up. <laughs> It means that it's curving like this. If it was a cup, it would hold water. Concave up holds water. Whereas your concave down curls downwards. Concave down would not hold water. So your typical f equals x squared parabola, which looks like that, well, if you poured some water in, it's that would stay there. It would stay there all day and night. That's concave up. So let me erase that here. Now we're going to explore mathematically how we actually find if something is concave up or concave down. And we're going to do that by using the second derivative test. f of x equals x to the third. f prime of x equals 3x squared. And f of x or f double prime of x equals 6x. We set that equal to 0, which occurs at x equals 0 in this situation. Now we're going to find intervals, just like we did for the first derivative test. And because we only have one inflection point here, we're just going to find this global, globally instead of doing from on narrow points. So our interval will be from negative infinity to zero and from zero to positive infinity. That encompasses everything. And now we pick our test points and then put them into our uh, second derivative. So negative one and positive one lies in those intervals. They're very easy to do. Six times negative one equals negative six and then 6 times 1 equals positive 6. But once again, we're only worried about whether something is positive or negative. The scale doesn't matter to us on concavity. Here we have negative, here we have positive. That's what we're concerned with. Now when you're doing the second derivative test, interpret negative as not holding water. It's concave down and a positive as holding water, it's concave up. When you switch from a negative to a positive, you have an inflection point. It doesn't matter whether you go to positive or negative or negative positive. Um, it's not like our maximums and minimums here where we get something different. One way or another, it's just an inflection point. And when we go up and we take a look at our graph of x equals 3, get a big point in the center here which is our inflection point and you can see on the negative axis this is curling in a downward fashion now it does not actually curl far enough to uh, form a parabola or anything like that but that's the general way that it curves in our positive x-axis we get an up curvature Positive, concave up, negative, concave down. 
positive x-axis holds water, negative x-axis doesn't hold water, and when we switch from one to the other, we have our inflection point. That's our second derivative test. See you next time where I can see you pee.